Hi, welcome to the video. My name is Zychronic, and today we're going to be talking about the Destiny 2 Weekly Reset for March 8th, 2022. And there are a few things I have reset this week that are quite interesting. First of all, uh, last week we had the first completions of the new raid, which you got a new cutscene when you logged into Destiny uh, that says, Hey, we win, but we're going to need to win some more. Furthermore, the other fragments in the Void 3.0 have been unlocked. Apparently you just have to go to Ikora to unlock these four different fragments, I guess they just didn't want to see them in the day one raid, and uh, I guess you can go get them. I don't know if there's like a quest, that's at Ikora. I imagine just like Ikora is, is basically, basically like Dory. If I go to this Ikora, she's like, what do you mean? I don't know what an enclave is. What, what are fragments? You go to the other one, it's like, ah, oh, God, yeah, there's some new fragments. Oh, I, I stand corrected. Okay, so yeah, you can just go to Ikora in the tower and uh, you can get your new fragments. Uh, you just go to the thing, you click on fragments. Uh, and then you can just, you can buy them for 25,000 Glimmer. Wow, it's really hard. It's, you know, it's a lot of money. What are you gonna do with all that money, Ikora? You know, you max out at 250,000, you know? And then you just go talk to this thing, you meditate, and then you get all the stuff. I don't really like this system. I think that it is purposeless. Like, why? But, you know, there you go. And of course, obviously, there's new weekly quests for the new seasonal stuff, the Operation Elbrus. If you finished up to the limit last week, you can now do the next part. It's pretty straightforward. Oh, uh, and I forgot, uh, there's actually double ordeal rewards. So you're going to get double ascended shards, double nightfall weapon drops, double everything for the nightfall ordeal this week. Which nightfall ordeal is going to be the light blade? Uh, the Savathun's, what is this one? Oh, that must be the, um, the Alakul looking dude that's the light version. Okay, I forgot about that strike. I've never, I've never done it. I've never done a nightfall in this strike. So, hey, it's it's new. You get to do a thing. I have absolutely no idea what 100k will do. I imagine Legend will probably be enough. It's possible you could get away with Hero, but um, I know a lot of people are up to Legend these days. Is this a mustache? What are these? Oh, those are eyes. <laughs> I, th I thought this was a subtle foe. Maybe it is a mustache, actually. And of course, the Nightfall Unique weapon this week is going to be Duty Bound. I believe Duty Bound was first week, and then it was Silicon. Does it just go back and forth between Duty Bound and Silicon Aroma? Seems kind of small. The Vanguard Strike Burn is going to be Arc Singe. The Rotating Crucible playlist is Team Scorched. This one is definitely a really fun one, and get your pinnacle gear, might as well. For the DSC Range Challenge this week, we have Red Rover, taking place in the first encounter, and in this encounter, every single person has to do the Operator buff job at least once down below. For the Vault of Glass Challenge, we have Strangers in Time, taking place in the fourth encounter of the raid. This is going to be the one after the Templar encounter. And in this one, anytime you kill a Minotaur with a special shield on it, you also have to kill the Wyvern in the other dimension at the same time. And the Vial of Disciple does not have a raid challenge. I assume they have to go through some iterations before they show up. And I can't remember, I think they talked about moving the pinnacle gear drops from different raids, like bouncing between each other. I don't know when they're going to start doing that. I imagine perhaps next season. Very good, very yes. Much yes, my, many wow yes. Yes, yes. Oh yes. Oh yes. Oh yes. <laughs> Moving on to the Eververse store, let's go and take a look at the Bright Dust options. Wow, that's a fancy looking ship. I mean, it's for, for silver and it takes a while to load, but like, I don't know why that's, that's kind of cool to me, but it looks so cool. Moving on, we also have some ghost shells for Bright Dust. This one's the Trackbound shell, which... Uh, I, I think I had this shell. This is the one from uh, 30th anniversary. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why. It looks like some Star Wars car. Uh, we have the Maximal Mahal, Mal, Malhari, which I don't know. I assume it's a reference. All the emotes are references. We have the Transmit Effect. Uh, we have the Time Honored Shader, which I imagine is a lot of gray and brown and won't take. Hey, yeah, there you go. Actually, not, not the worst, but I don't really know what I would be creating. Look, it's a mustache. It must be a mustache. For the other Bright Dust section, we have the Dawn of Invention, which is essentially just like the 2001 Space Odyssey. They're like smacking sticks and then they use tools. Uh, we have the Scare Feet. We have the, the ghost shell that looks like a, a, a station wagon with wood paneling on it. God damn, you look, I, I, I tried testing the boosters like it was a sparrow. We have the Dig Psych. Uh, we have the ornament for the chest piece. Again, keep in mind that I'm on my Titan, so I see the Titan one. Whatever class you're on, you're going to see the chest piece for it. Uh, and it does have the shield on the back. And I think the hunter has the bow on the back. So that's pretty cool. Is this going to be like a Call of Duty thing where the shield's on my back so I don't get killed from my back? Because that'd be pretty cool. Uh, we have the ornament for uh, the um, uh, the Halo Magnum. What's it called? Forerunner? Yeah, that's what it's called. Uh, we have Ghost Projection. We have some Transmet Effects. Uh, this one in particular right here uh, is one of my favorite Transmet Effects in the game. Dominus Go, you come in like a flaming angel. Look at this. I just like it. It's very old, but it, it works very nicely. We have the Burnished Reed, very nice gold, black, and green. 
the Reef Regalia, which may end up being a better option for Warlocks or weapons. The Deep Sea Jaunt, which is pretty bad. And the Flavedo Core, which is a very mustardy, like, ugh. Up next, let's take a look at Banshee's inventory to show off the different weapon options that he has available today. And I look forward to some of these, especially the drunk right here. Uh, first up, we have the Reg Reginald, I don't know how to pronounce this, Reginald D. Auto-loading 1-2 punch, actually a pretty damn good combo on a shotgun, especially the auto-loading, and it also has a soul bag. God damn! Unfortunately, it's not level upable, um, but it, this is a very, very good roll for this kind of weapon. Uh, definitely a PvE roll. After that, we have the Syncopation. Sync Syncop Syncopation? No, no, I said it right the first time. Uh, moving target, Focus Fury, not the, the best combo, not the worst, uh, and has Ricochet, has Hammerforge, has range. This is a very good version of a 390, although I think there are some better options, some more damage stuff. This is pretty damn good, and this, oh wait, this actually is a damage perk, I always forget about this one. So, you know, I take that back. I think this is one of the best 390s that I've seen in a while. I don't know why my, my, my voice cracked, don't, don't tell anybody. <laughs> After that, we have the Vision, Killing Wind Swashbuckler. I believe this has Kill Clip on it. Uh, and definitely could use a lot more range stuff. You're definitely going to need it on it. After that, we have the Contingency Plan, which is a Tunnel Vision Thresh, uh, which I can't remember the best rolls on this. Um, this is okay, but probably could do better. After that, the Plerma B, which this one actually has auto-loading plus explosive light, and that is absolutely what you want here. And, of course, impact casing is nice. Reload master work. Um, not, actually, not bad, just definitely could do a lot better, and, again, you can't level it up. Uh, and of course the Typhon GL5, which has Chill Clip Steady Hand. I believe this can have, uh, it can have Explosive Light as well, but no auto loading. Um, and I think that you're going to have to go with one of those combos because Explosive Light is really good on a, a grenade launcher and a rocket. Overall, not bad. Uh, you came out to play, man. Good job. You came out to play, good boy. And of course, we have new seasonal challenges. So uh, I'm going to read out uh, the basics of the... Oh, that's unfortunate. <laughs> so the first one's going to be the seasonal stuff, finish the week three stuff, get three runic chests, pretty straightforward. And you also get the insight, which is good for upgrading. Complete a weekly mission from the Witch Queen on hero difficulty or higher, which seems easy if you did legendary, right? Extract a resonance element from a deep sight resonant weapon. That's a mouthful. Complete all of the encounters of the new raid. Oh, that's an XP plus plus plus. God damn. EDZ, public events, patrols, lost sectors, stuff like that. Getting your power to 1550. This is gear score, by the way, because I'm artifact over this. Long range weapons like bows, trace rifles, pulse rifles, and EDZ is, uh, oh, in the EDZ. Killing Taken and Gambit, Team Scorch Kills, Defeating Champions in Nightfalls, and Bonus and Higher Difficulty. Yeah, so this week, the, uh, the, the raid one is the one with the highest XP. Everything else is just XP+. Plus. So if you're here with the week three Operation Elbrus, you can start on the Dead Messenger quest line, or the uh, Catalyst quest. So, yeah, we can finally get that going. I wonder what that would be. Oh, and I know, it's turnabout, right. Oh my god, you're such an old man. It's so <laughs> the single-handed cruelty reminds me back in my day when I used to use a pencil and... Anyways, make sure you come check out my live streams that I have right after this video. Hopefully we'll be able to do a Vow of Disciple raid today. Uh, I have not tried it yet, it was quite busy over the week, but I saw a lot of people playing it, and I saw that, unfortunately, Dado got second by three minutes. That man has gotten second place, what, four times now? In, in, in raid races? So unfortunate. They should just give him a belt at this point. Anyways, yeah, I, I live stream, and we should live stream here on YouTube, so just stick around. I'll see you in a couple hours. And of course, truly, these videos and my spreadsheets would not be possible without support from you guys. So a big thank you to my patrons on Patreon. Specifically, big thank you to Mom and Dad, Christian Thompson, Dr. Strange, Kelly Allen, Money Steve Bachman, Sermon Shonen, and Pastor Casey Reagan for their support on Patreon. That's it. Hope you guys did enjoy my name's Arcana, and I'll see you guys on the next one.